Hello. Today is 14th of July, 2022. Today, little girl. Why did we mark off the calendar? Why did we mark off the calendar? Yeah, we were on the live this week and we were on the Okay. <laughs> so today we're going to do ballet level three, lesson number three, bar. So we'll start in first position. And before we even do anything, let's talk about our ballet belly back. Yep, it goes back towards the spine. We call that the BBB. And the top of your head is reaching up to the ceiling. Yeah, so you do those two things at once, right? Yeah, we're gonna try and hold, hold that as we breathe and move. So we'll prepare seven and eight. Demi plie. We're going to do a special thing here. We're going to roll up onto what's called the forced arch. Then we're going to stretch and lower. Do it again. Five and six. You see how many my arm? Seven and eight. Yep, so my arm just went through first for the bra. So we did that. Now we're going to do a, two grand pliés with the same core bra. Down. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Now we're going to take a lateral crown break towards the bar and back to center. You got your BBB and your head reaching up to the ceiling. What? And we're going to take a balance. Down, down. How's your shoulder? Uh, it's right. Okay, so when we turn around to the other side, if this feels too sore for that arm, you can just go like this. Okay, uh, anyway, then we'll transition into second position. And do it again. And do it again. And then when we turn around to the other side, uh, we'll, we'll be facing this way. And if we'll do fifth and fifth. Yep, you know the drill. Okay, get the music going.
where I've lost my alignment. So as I'm working really hard to keep my BBB and my tailbone down, when I am ascending, just finishing here, this is what wants to happen. So like I can hold it on really well. Let's say I'm doing a grand plie right here, and then this is usually where we lose it. So let's just put some focus for a moment on that ascension at the end of your demi plie. And it can happen in first position as well. And it can happen in second position as well. It's something we gotta look out for. So would you can happen in third? Yes, it can happen in fourth, it can happen in third. It can even happen in parallel. So let's pick, you pick, you pick a position. Okay, let's hold that in your for just a moment. Make sure that your tailbone is dropped and your DVD is happening. Now, you're gonna work really hard right here. That was good. Try it in fifth. I think it's fifth is harder. Right here, that's where the work happens. Do you feel that? I like to try, yeah. <laughs> I like to feel a little stretch right here in my hip flexors. If I don't feel a stretch right here, it means that they're kind of folded in, which is what happens when we tilt our pelvis forward. So you want to feel that stretch. My ballet teacher used to talk about having front pockets on your pants, and I want to press through those pockets. When I'm, when I'm coming up from my demi I want to press through those pockets, because if, if I tilt my pelvis, those pockets, kind of get crinkled and hidden. So think about pressing through those pockets, okay? All right, let's, uh, let's switch back. We're gonna do tondu from the hip. Here's that. Oh, thank you. Yeah, don't really need that. Look how warm we're getting already. Tondu from fifth. We're gonna do tondu and two plucking piques and close. And Tanya Clyde, you suit to me and close. So this is what it looks like. And if we used our arm, we would go seven and eight. Tandu, pluck, pluck, and close. Tandu, fondu, suit to me and close. Good. Now to the side, we have two closings in this combination. The first closing is going to close where you came from. And the second closing is going to do what? Close the other side. You got it. It's going to change. So, tendu, PK, PK, close where you came from. Tendu, bandu, sutenu is a close, and you're going to change. Sutenu, and yeah, and PA. To the back, tendu, PK, PK, close. Tendu, bandu,
But we don't want to go like this. But why would you do it with your toe? That's a great question. I bet we could come up with some really creative scenarios that you might, but not now. <laughs> so the idea is that you want the emphasis to be on the up. The up, not the down. The down. PK means to pluck or to perch. This version is the plucking version. And if you think about plucking, you know, if there's a string here, you just pluck it and pull away. Pluck it and pull away. That's what we're doing here with our PKs. Can I say a couple? Yeah. Okay. Great. Um, let me get you a cup. Bless you. say 
there's too many firsts. But seven firsts and fifth on the eighth, that's first layer. Second layer is to add your arm. What's third layer? Uh, and ten. Yes. And fourth layer? Uh, friction. Yep. You got this. What's next? We are going to just actually, before we do a little stretching, we're going to work on Sterling for the PA again. We're just going to kind of stand with one hand on the bar and practice that. And if, is it okay with you if I give your feet, if I touch your feet and ankles? Okay. Okay? Think of it like a little massage. And I'm going to think of it like I'm sculpting some clay. That we want the heel forward and the toes back. And we want them to wrap around that ankle. That is Sir Le Coutier. Yes, and that, that is Sir Le Coutier Devon, which means front. That is Sir Le Coutier Derriere. And yeah, so when you do the Derriere version, let's see Sir Le Coutier Derriere. That's right, it's almost like there's an imaginary ankle <laughs> there for you to wrap around. You're just wrapping around that ankle. Double ankle. Double ankle. That's nice. Okay, now we're going to swing at your knee. Your knee is a hinge joint. It only goes in one plane of movement. Yep, that's right. So you're just going to kind of let that go. And we're going to go from front, swing it open, to back. Swing it open, front, back, yeah. Now, anytime, so you're, like I was saying, your knee can only do one plane of movement. Anytime, but you, you might say, but Missy, I can make my foot go in a circle. Doesn't that mean that my knee can make a circular motion? Mm -hmm. Actually, no. Your knee is still only doing the hinge thing. When you do a circle, that's happening up here in your hip. Your hip has a huge spherical range of motion. So I, to make this circle with my foot, I'm actually turning my hip in and out and combining that with the hinge movement of my knee. So we want to avoid, when we're doing this through the PA from front to back, we want to avoid this motion that, that is the hip. You want to hold the hip right where it is as much as you can and just let your knee hinge. Let's turn around to the other side. Okay. May I move the yeah. leg? Okay. Thank you. That's really good. Let's lower it a little bit. There. Really good. So heel forward, toes wrapping around the back. Cool. Let's see. Here we are. Well, I love that you did the hinging with your knee. Yes. Yes. Yep, you can. And I will tell you in your ballet training later in life, <laughs> um, we do these these little circles with the bottom of our foot at our knee, sometimes at our ankle, but usually at our knee. And those are, uh, that's a variation of round of jam or circle of the leg. So you will have that a little bit. And that is happening because I am moving my hip a little bit. Um, but we try to minimize that and get that knee as loose as we can. There's also petite batma, which means little separation of the legs. And eventually, we have to do that. Pardon? We must do that. Yeah, we did. But yeah, at Petit Bama, that's right. And that music is going to be little and fast to help you, like, see how fast, how fast can you do that? How fast? And it, that trains your fast twitch muscle fibers, yeah. And it works best if you can kind of immobilize your hip and let your knees swing. And then your muscles on the top and bottom of your femur bone can really start training that fast twitch work. We're not doing an exercise with that today. Just want you to know about it. Okay? <laughs> yeah. Let's come back here and do a little bar stretching. There it is. I would not recommend that you ever do this when you're cold, when you haven't started moving yet. Okay? Please. Is it too high? You want to? I think this is our lowest option. Let's just try. Okay, just try. Yeah. Okay, yeah. all day. And lower. Plie. And stretch. All day. And lower. Let's take the left arm off and go towards the leg. Good. Was that your trick arm? Mm -hmm. Okay, let's take the right arm and go away. Try not to raise that hip. Try and keep it down as much as you can. Yeah. You know it's a little bit too tall. All right, let's switch legs. 
up to sweat. You've warmed up enough. Plie and stretch. Relevé and roll. Plie, stretch, relevé, and lower. Right arm this time. And left arm if you can. Okay, good. Shake it out. Shake it out.
just over 30 minutes, and there is one more exercise I'd like to do. Is it okay? Sure. If we stay a little, a few minutes sure. longer? Okay. Okay, great. Thank you. Let's come back to this side of the bar. We're going to take eight inches of your resume, followed by one ground up knot on the floor. Okay? Do you remember what inches of your resume looks like? That's a relevé. Yes, an HJ means to escape. So when you're doing these HJs, you're going to be in plie when you're in fit. And what are you going to be doing when you scoot out to second position? You'll be in relevé in second position and plie in fit. Yes. So we're going to do eight of those. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One ground button on the clock. What would that look like? Do you know what ground button is? That's ground B. Yes, yes. Ground B was big something, right? So ground means big, but ma means separation of the legs. Yeah, so that's a big kick. So we're going to do how many? One. One. One to the front. One to the side. Goes and change right away. One to the back. And on clock means across. So that kind of has four arms. So the fourth thing we do is going to be to repeat the side. All right. I'll do this one with you. I'll show you the rhythm. Mm -hmm. 